The following podcast is a Next Level production. So, uh, let Carrington go, and then um, oh, tell Bob you. Thompson that he's going to Minneapolis, because he hates the cold. I mean, just tell him that. Mr. Holloway, I'm so excited to be here. I, 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 I can't wait to take on whatever case you want to assign Your to me. Your first case is the parole of Emil Blonsky. Oh. Also known as Abomination, Mr. Blonsky has been serving his sentence in an ultra-high security prison. I am very familiar with Mr. Blonsky, sir. So you know there's a lot of controversy surrounding his possible release. This is extremely high profile. The publicity alone is worth GLK and H taking this on pro bono. I'm sorry, but I can't represent him, sir. I have a serious conflict of interest. This man tried to kill my cousin, Bruce. Yeah, that's quite all right. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about She-Hulk Attorney at Law, Season 1, Episode 2, Superhuman Law. <laughs> <laughs> She's a superhuman lawyer, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it, actually, that unfolds during this episode, if you think about it. So Exactly, yeah. Uh, what is the synopsis for this? Uh, very short and sweet. Jen is hired at a prestigious law firm, but must practice as She-Hulk and rep a complicated client. <laughs> yeah, we all know who that client is. Uh-huh. <laughs> Those of you who listened or watched, actually watched uh, Disney Plus's She-Hulk, you'll know. It's yeah. Emil Blonsky. And yeah. it was uh, the guy who tried to kill her cousin, Bruce Banner. Mm-hmm. But they actually have something cool in there. And we'll talk about that later, which I thought was pretty funny and how they made a canon. Absolutely. All right. So uh, initial thoughts. I, I loved it. I, I loved it. You know, it's it's a great setup for the rest of the season of, of where we're going to go. I don't know if this is going to be, you know, the one trial or if we're going to have more than than this. Uh, but I, I did want to say one thing. I rewatched episode one. Uh, and uh, so I guess from what we see in this episode, she was just faking uh, being drunk when Hulk revealed that Cap had uh, had sex yes. with the chorus girl <laughs> in 1943 on the USO tour. And she's like, Captain America. Foo! And that's all you get. <laughs> so yeah. I just thought I thought that was that was great to 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 get that. And I rewatched. I finally actually like I don't know if I blinked every other time or what, but I finally actually saw the middle finger scene when she's when he throws her off the cliff because i really paid attention because everybody had talked about it i'm like i didn't actually see it i mean i I didn't doubt that it happened i just wanted to actually see it for myself and yeah for sure she flips in the middle finger and she's going off the cliff there so uh (laughs) uh, yeah this show is definitely a little bit more at least in the dialogue uh it's a little bit more it's more yeah it definitely more adult oriented um obviously a few people out there that have disney plus if you have the kids or family oriented uh, rating for it, you're not going to mm. get it. You actually it? have to click okay. that on. You actually have okay. to click that on for uh, who are allowed to watch it. So because they use, you know, four letter words, uh, you know. Yeah. You I don't know, think they're going to go so far visuals. as to actually drop an F-bomb in the season. Uh, I don't think they'll I don't use think an F-bomb. I they'll do that. But, but they regardless, definitely, yeah. Yeah, we've definitely had other – other words that uh, you don't want your kids necessarily spouting off in the middle of the grocery store. <laughs> exactly. So I, I would think that this is one of those shows that they made for adults that grew up with the whole Marvel cinematic universe or the Marvel comics or grew up with Marvel comics and are adults now. So my feeling is, okay, great. That's, that's awesome because there are going to be certain characters. Hence like, <clears throat> Deadpool, uh, mm-hmm. you, you have to have certain characters like that. Now, mm-hmm. mind you, within the MCU itself proper, if they wanted a PG-13 film, they're going to have to bleep out Deadpool. Really. Mm-hmm. Honestly. So, uh, but, you know, with my overall thoughts about the episode, I enjoyed it. It, it was kind of, okay, this is the next step of where we're going with uh, where Jen is, because she basically went through that whole courtroom scene. She she hulked out on Titania, attacked 
Titania protected people, but still got fired. Mm -hmm. And now she is offered a job at, what is it, GLKNH? Yeah, something like that. GLH and K or K and H. I can't remember exactly what the letters uh, were. Yeah, I, I, actually, it's pretty funny, too, because Penny and Greg went through it, and Penny went through the whole thing on uh, on She Hulk Cast on Podcastica, mm. which is pretty cool. I got to listen to that, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, not to get, you know give a cheap plug, but honestly, yeah, I've got it, I've friends. got it queued up. I've got it. I've got it queued up. But I haven't uh, haven't listened yet. So, uh, the, but I've got the, it. I've got it queued up. Yeah, they're really good friends of ours. Penny was a uh, uh, a lawyer at one point, and she had she broke it down. So if you like that idea and thought of a woman who was a lawyer and her thoughts about the show, listen to you know She Hulk cast on Podcastica, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah, I, I just love the fact that it's like she gets fired and it's like, oh, wait. And there she is looking for jobs, but she's looking at um, like amusement parks and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. And Nikki's there by her side. She does get hired. Uh, I love all that aspect. And of course, they hire her because it's all it's like uh, it's the superhuman uh, legal superhuman division. law division. Yeah, law superhuman division. law division. Yep. So, uh, yeah, she gets picked up for that, and obviously she has to, you know, represent Emil, Emil Blonsky, or Emil Blonsky, who is the abomination, and I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, I really enjoyed that for the fact that it brings a lot of stuff into canon within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well as the Disney+. Plus. So we, we have that connection, and it's basically cementing in... Tatiana Mas Maslany's uh, character as She-Hulk or Jennifer Walters within the MCU. So we know that we're going to see her in the movies as well. So she's got, uh, you know, job security at this point <laughs> when it comes yeah, to we'll the see. MCU. <laughs> we'll see. Anything can happen. You know, we, we haven't heard anything about uh, Moon Knight, so we'll see. Well, you know, uh, we do need a West Coast Avengers, so who knows? <laughs> but those are my thoughts. I really enjoyed the episode, and I really had a good time watching it, and it and unraveled a lot. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I guess we should move into our top fives or our highlights of the mo uh, the episode of uh, She Hulk: Attorney at Law, season two, uh, season one, episode two. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yours? Okay. Well, I, the very first thing off the off the bat, I, I love that the little news news reel that we're getting of the courtroom, what happened, and they they mentioned we get to see uh, Jamil uh, Jam Jamila Jamil's actual face on the on the screen. She's not on there, but they mentioned that Tatiana uh, Titania Titania is that it? Titania, T Titania or Titania? However, yeah, you want something to state like that. It. Yeah, the superpowered. She, they call her a superpowered influencer. So she's not a hero, she's not a villain, but she's but that she was fleeing traffic court when she burst into the room. So it had absolutely nothing to do with the actual case that was being discussed in there. <laughs> uh, you know, she throws that desk for whatever reason at the jury because reasons i guess you know it's just like uh but I, I just love that we got a mention of her so i hope that that bodes that we're going to see her later in the season come back. Yeah, same here. I well, you have to realize, too, in the comic books, she was somebody that was opposing to She-Hulk in the comics. And okay. that stems all the way from back in 1984 from Secret Wars, issue number three. So she was created by Doctor Doom in that in that, that comic book and all that stuff. But later on, throughout the She-Hulk runs, she comes back and she becomes one of her, her biggest nemesis. Mm. So... Yeah, you know, I think it, it's somebody that we're not gonna. You know, it, we're. I'm pretty sure we're gonna see her again. I would hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. But uh, yeah, and the fact is, she's like, oh, she is uh, a super influencer. That's yeah. it's it's like, oh, you're an influencer like YouTube. <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah, it's different. It's different than the comic books, obviously. So yeah, I know. But I thought it was pretty cool. All right. Well, uh, mine would be well, Jen getting fired from GLKNH law firm. No, she got fired from the district attorney's office. She oh, the, oh, yeah, and she was hired by yes, right. yes. All right, and uh, but you know they they find her and they get her, and I, I think it's funny though how she was so like wait 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 what I have to I have to represent who no. Right. 
he tried to kill my cousin. And they're like, well, regardless, it's like, if you don't do this, you don't have a job. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> it's like, all right. Yeah, yeah. I loved, I love that. And, you know, Penny, Penny on, again, you just mentioned She-Hulk cast, uh, but Penny kind of called it in, in their first, after their first episode or in their, when they were discussing episode one, that it looks like she's going to get hired by this other firm. She, and the guy even confirms, you would have won the case. Like, you you were winning the case. Yeah. If this hadn't happened and I was, uh, I was able to, you know, get a, a mistrial, um, declared you would have won the case and he says not many people win cases against us so that's why we're hiring you see i like that acknowledgement of her that she is a really good lawyer of course penny also mentioned that the the other guy's closing remarks that even she probably could have destroyed the guy in court so um uh the the guy wasn't the guy wasn't giving much of a a good of a good argument in his closing remarks but yeah i just love that they hire her and and again like you said she she voices concern well you know he tried to kill my cousin and he's like well he signed a waiver so you got to do it okay so (laughs) yeah so grudgingly she takes the job Mm -hmm. with the glk and h law firm but as a a part of the superhuman law division yeah i I think it's pretty cool Mm -hmm. and i think we're gonna see more people too when it comes to that yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, I love we got another show where the the superhero, just like in Miss Marvel, uh, Ms. Marvel, she doesn't like her name and she's hoping to find a different name. Unfortunately, She-Hulk, I think uh, the comics run for 40 years. You're probably not going to get a name change. <laughs> you know, no, nope, nope, unfortunately, nope. Uh, I think I think you're going to be stuck with it. Yeah, it, it's really sad because, you know, it's kind of basically uh, to quote Jen. She says, that name better not stick. It's so dumb. I can't even exist without being a derivative of the Hulk, which is very true. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that at the beginning with the newscast where the guy says, like, a chick Hulk. And the other guy looks at the camera and says, you mean a she Hulk? And he goes, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's breaking the fourth wall at that point, too. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's it's really, really cool. Those those little things we got. I love that moment when she's walking through the law firm and and, uh, Mr. I think it's Holloway Mm -hmm. is describing to her what the job is going to be. And she's she's breaking the fourth wall talking to us. And so she completely misses everything that he's just said. And so she has no clue what she's walking into. And I thought it was great because we didn't hear it either. So we didn't know exactly what what's going to be going on. But then her whole, uh, I'm a bit agnostic. (laughs) She's like, she's like, I'm going to be worrying about that for the next year. I'm worrying about my choice of words there. So yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, Another one for me is I just absolutely loved Mark Lynn Baker and getting another father who is supportive of his female (laughs) superhero daughter. But, you know, there's these are two themes that we've got back to back shows where we have uh, have these things. And and I love he pulls her into the garage, you know, and he gives her that pep talk. And and then there's some things she says. He goes, oh, well, I didn't know about that part of it, but he's still he's supportive and, and yeah. wants to help her out and it just was was really great it, when you know you think at first he's going to be this bumbling kind of idiot because he says don't worry i've already broken the ice i've already told everybody that you got fired so you don't have to bring it up and she's like what <laughs> you know? yeah i know uh, honestly i have to follow up on it that was my next point too and mm-hmm. i love the fact that we get uh, mark Lynn baker on there uh who was cousin larry appleton mm-hmm. or appleton <laughs> from Perfect Strangers from 1986 to 1993. I think he was the perfect dad for Jen in this show. And I really Absolutely. did enjoy him. And he wasn't the bumbling buffoon. He was just like the perfect dad to like show caring and everything for his daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially too with, uh, what, what was, was it her brother Chet? Or? The co- I think it was cousin Chet. Because this cousin is the guy Chet. that, remember, I. In the um, I don't in the think first her, episode, it, it might be her brother. I don't now that you say that it might be her brother because because Bruce called him cousin Chad. Mm-hmm. So yeah. either either he's her brother or he's the son of the other couple that was there, the the other uncle or whatever. So I think yeah. it's either way. He's he's part of the family. So. Yeah. And apparently he was promoted to manager at Best Buy. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently he was the other genius in the family yeah, that they were that referring was... to from the first episode. Yeah. Which is funny, too, because he had long hair and he goes, bruh, he looked like a bro dude. <laughs> yeah. But whatever. Yeah. But I, I just love the, the fact of Jen's family. We got introduced to that and how they yeah. embraced everything. I just love how her father goes, well, they, they brought up Hawkeye. 
Well, did they get all the arrows that Hawkeye <laughs> left? You know, that that could be something that could hurt somebody. And <laughs> they all thought it's about great. all that. Cool and stuff. they all have these different questions for her about, yeah. about different things. She's, she's like, I don't even, I haven't even met any of these people. Like, I'm not an Avenger. Like, they, they you know, in the, I listened closely on my third watch. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, to some of those background questions. And like, one of the things is, well, you know, Bruce is the one who saved billions of people with just a snap of his fingers, you know? And yeah. just, and she's just sitting there and you can just see her on her face. She's just getting more and more just frustrated, annoyed, and that's why yeah. and annoyed. And that's why the dad pulls her into the garage. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Mark Lynn Baker. I, I hope we get more of him uh, this here. season. I think, I think we will. Cause we had that cut that we had that, uh, after the end credit, credit scene. scene. Yeah. Yeah. With her and, doing all the things around the house as she hulk. It was just it was just hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. take advantage. Family always does. You know that. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you I can do it. this. Hey, help us. Oh, great. Thanks, Dad. Can you open the door? Okay. <laughs> yeah. My next one is uh, is we've already talked a little bit about him, but Tim Roth was just a joy. Oh yeah, to, to watch. He's just chewing up the scenery like crazy. It, it looked to me, and I hope this is true. I, it looked to me like he enjoyed playing this character, this Emil Blonsky character. You know, and he brings up these seven soulmates. He said it twice, so there's got to be something with that. I don't know uh, what's what's going on there. But, it might uh, be a group therapy thing for all we know. It might be, or, or it might be some other, uh, but it was really, really cool just to, to see him. Like I said, he's just chewing up the scenery, um, but he, he's great. And he gives her basically the case. He's like, they pumped me up full of super soldier serum. And I thought I was going to mm. be Captain Bloody America, you know, and he's, yep. like, he's like, I'm on loan from the, you know, I'm Russian born, British, uh, UK raised. I'm on loan from the UK to the United States government. They sent me out on a mission and I was on a mission. And she's like, but you destroyed half my Harlem, that wasn't really part of your mission, you know. So yes, that was because of the super soldier serum. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, yeah, that was his defense, which makes sense. Yeah, I, I love his whole thing about the haikus. I have this whole book of haikus that he <laughs> he, re- he sent one to Bruce, and Bruce mentions it at the end, which we'll get more into that that yep. uh, conversation in a minute. But uh, yeah, I just like Tim Roth was just absolutely a, just a blast to watch. Mm. You know, he's like, he's like, I, you know, he's like, namaste. <laughs> it's like, like spiritually, <laughs> I'm better. I've, I've not only changed myself physically and emotionally, but I've changed myself spiritually. You know, you're yeah. just like, dude, it was just it. Yeah. I, I really think they're pushing for this Thunderbolts show. Honestly, but with the fact that they, they actually gave us Tim Roth and We've already seen Abomination in Shang-Chi, which actually mm-hmm. you see those images within this particular episode. And I thought that was so amazing. And they're like, okay, oh, something came up. Oh, well, he broke out of prison. So Wong wind up taking him out of prison and he's been yeah. training Amel. And he's like, oh, great. It's like, oh, now it's out there. Somebody has video footage. So it kind of correlates to the MCU because that was within Shang-Chi. And mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I I just love the fact that she got the new job. She's a representation of, like, superpowered beings. Emma is being their first or her first job for this. Mm -hmm. And I just love that aspect as well. Uh, I also love the fact that she she had a right to hire her own paralegal, which is Nikki. That that was so so great. So (laughs) Nikki went with her right along. She goes, Check out this office. It's amazing. <laughs> we got all this stuff. We got a refrigerator. We got this. Oh, it's like, yeah. Yeah. Nikki is like so gung ho. And I can see why Penny is so happy about her on, on podcast. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think it's pretty cool, though. The fact that we got, you already mentioned with Tim Roth as Emil Blonsky, he talks about the whole Harlem thing. They literally canonize the incredible Hulk with Edward Norton. And there's this like kind of thing where Bruce is talking to her from the Sicarian ship, which Mm -hmm. honestly, it looks like a living room. I don't know about you or everybody else, but I honestly, it looked like a living room to me. He was just hanging out, his feet up on the phone, casually relaxing. I thought he was actually, where was it? In Mexico at the time? Yeah, it looked like he was in an office or something like that. Yeah. Looked, that's what it looked like to me. It was like it had an office because it was like they, screens they, in the they background. Face out. Yeah. And then and you, you see the, haiku. the spaceship. Yeah. I yeah, love it. It mentions about the haiku he got from Emil and mm-hmm. how it's like, oh, it's in the past. 
I'm a completely different person now. And then she laughs, deadpanned into the, to the, it's like the breaking the fourth wall again. Ha ha. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah. Well, yeah, we all know it's a different movie or it's like a different Hulk, different actor, different everything. Everything. I'm I'm a different person. Literally. Like, it's just great for him to acknowledge that. And and like you said, there's a lot of people that kind of dump on the incredible Hulk. They don't like it. Uh, Edward Norton didn't want to reprise the role and, and all that, but there was a whole bunch of stuff going on when it came to the MCU at that point. Yeah, mm-hmm. I understand it, and now we're at a. I, they could still bring back Edward Norton, honestly. You know, multiverse. Uh, I mean, with the multiverse, <laughs> sure. But, but we've already, but we've already lumped this into the story, at least into this. So, but that's 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 a whole other thing. I, I'm not. I, that's that's just complete. Spin. But yeah, no, this was part of my my highlights too. Was the whole conversation because it's great when she calls him and she's just going a mile a minute about. I just wanted to call you, <laughs> and finally he stops her and goes. You're calling me to tell you that you're taking the case, right? And goes, she goes, yeah, I'm calling you to tell you that I'm taking the case. You know? <laughs> it was just so perfect. Their chemistry is so good. And unfortunately, it looks like we may not get him. I hope we get him at the at the end of the season, maybe. But we might not get him at all because they've got another story to tell well, with Hulk now. Yeah, so. I, I really think what – and I already stated it last time we, when we recorded for the first episode. I really think they're setting us up for World War Hulk. But the difference is between that and the comics. In the comics, he literally was Hulk for years and had a relationship, a whole family. He had a son and a daughter and a wife and everything. Yeah. So he's going back to Sakaar. He is smart Hulk at this point. When he goes back there, he's going to be like, oh, you're my son? Your name's I mean, we're, that's all speculation, though, because that's the comic book. We don't know. Yeah, what, we yeah. have no idea what the I, plot I'm looking this, forward to whatever so. they do at this point, because yeah. this is completely different. It's going to be very rewritten. But I'm like, as a fan of the comics, I'm going to be like, Scar's going to be like, who are you? <laughs> and then if he, that's, we don't know. I mean, like I said, they could do anything with the Sakaar thing. So yeah, it's, it's true. all... So yeah. I'm, I'm, but the I'm fact it, that but he's traveling back that that to me was pretty cool because it shows more that they're doing within mm-hmm. the MCU because yeah. they're incorporating everything. Yeah, and something else he does he, when he asked her what her name it what they named her he he says She Hulk he says the uh, the name of the series he says She Hulk Attorney at Law so I thought yep. that was great that we got mic that mic drop, drop right. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark Ruffalo, you just dropped the mic. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing less that I have about it is Emil has haikus. Uh, apparently, he has haikus for all his victims, too. Mm-hmm. And he trusts Jen to represent him completely in court. So, and the, fu- the funny part was is that, you know, she was like, oh, you forgot to tell me about you breaking out of prison. <laughs> well, no, that's at the end. She hasn't talked to, to Tim Roth about that yet. That's, yeah, that's just that's how it happens that's, at the very yeah, end. Yeah. Yeah. At the very end, she gets that, and she gets that look at this sucks. She turns them and just says, this sucks to the, to the cameras. I love it. Um, yeah. I've only got a couple more notes of stuff that we haven't talked about when she's applying for different law firms, the backgrounds mm-hmm. that you see behind her each, you can tell that each office she's going to is getting like dingier and dingier to where the last one she's at has got like, like, cardboard file boxes on like card tables in the background because you see she's getting lower and lower down the tier of law firms that she's applying to that is telling her no uh and then the guy that comes into with the gift basket uh calls himself pug uh he says the name of the episode he's the first one that says superhuman law so i thought that was that was great uh and then his whole there's a map to the best bathroom for pooping you know (laughs) was just that scene is just hilarious and i just at first i thought he called himself paul but i had to go back and and watch it with the subtitles on no he calls himself pug i don't know where that comes from but we'll see um yeah i'm starting to think that's a character we'll see later on in the show i'm sure i mean he's part of the law firm so we've got to see him Mm, i'm thinking something different but i don't know uh but the fact that he actually found the best place to go number two yeah, yeah <laughs> in that law firm. Uh, have you got any quotes that we haven't uh, said yet? Uh, the only other quote that I would have would be from Jen's dad and him saying, "This isn't the first time we had to deal with a Hulk inside the family, and you yeah. didn't even destroy a city." <laughs> uh, I've got a few. Um, first off, you can't work there; they don't have good snacks. 
I, that was one of those things. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you already mentioned that the paralegal thing when Mr. Holloway says, I do not care who your paralegal is. And you hear Jen go, yes. Like she just won some negotiating thing yeah, yeah, there. But she already she's had like, this the is anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, when she's in the prison and she starts to, to quote Silence of the Lambs and the guy says, ma'am, this is a prison. I thought was just well, great. The, the question the I job. have about that is, was that the raft? I have no idea. They didn't show us. So it's, they didn't it's on show the, us. It's I'm on curious. the West coast. It's on the West coast though. So I don't know where Tim Roth was. was mm, uh, that's it, a didn't good look question. Like it, it didn't look like it was an Island. It looked like there was a parking lot around. Yeah, it, it looked so like it, a parking lot or a regular prison itself. Mm-hmm. So listeners, if you guys have any thoughts, please let us know. Um, uh, and then, I, I thought it was the raft. Yeah, it could have been, I don't know. Um, but wasn't the raft, on the east coast so she would have had to flown all the way over there and then back again very true so i mean it's possible but um the last one i've got is uh from dennis who's just such a douchebag when he's in there he says there's a hot chick over there i'm gonna go talk to it like yeah. he doesn't even <laughs> acknowledge it you know, he's, i'm gonna go talk to it i thought just dennis you're such a tool man why are you why are you such a tool I know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the these episodes are very short. Uh, I've noticed this is shorter than the first one, mm. but they go they go by so quickly. I actually watched it was funny too. I actually did an installation at a client's home, and the woman was like, "I haven't even watched this." She goes, "Wow, these go by really fast." <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. "Yeah, we watched the first episode." She goes, "Wow, I, I got to watch those again." I said, "Watch it twice." Yeah, or three times, yeah. and then you'll I think get I more. watched this one like three and a half times because, like, I watched it and then I watched it again and I watched it to take notes and then I backed it up because I wanted to get that bug yeah, thing. You, you so get, yeah, you get so much out of every time. And I said that to her, so she goes, "Oh, okay, cool." She goes, "My husband hates that stuff," but I was like, <laughs> oh, "Okay, cool, watch it." And yeah, you know, she goes, "I really like it." It's like, wow, a That's woman really, really superhero. <laughs> it's like, yeah, cool. So uh, I watched it as I was doing an installation and. Somebody's homes. Nice. So I thought it was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, that, that was our coverage on uh, She-Hulk, Season 1, Episode 2. And uh, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts, still, please send them down in the comments below in the Facebook page or even on uh, the YouTube when these come out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as always, we, we remind you that you're obviously listening to us on your podcast player of choice. If you can give us a review there, we would love to, to get that from you, a five-star review and, uh, and see that and give you a shout out here on the, the podcast. Exactly. And you can check out our website, panels to pixels podcast.com. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter at panels to pixels, which would be panels, the number two and pixels. We have an email address, and that's probably the easiest way to get a hold of us is through our email, which is panels2pixels1 at gmail.com. That's panels2pixels, all spelled out in words, and the number one at gmail.com. And you can find us out on YouTube. So a lot of people like to listen to their podcasts on YouTube because people just like put their product out there just the same as they do on regular podcasts by your choice. So all you have to do is search for panels to pixels podcast. Give us a thumb, uh, thumbs up or subscribe if you like what we're doing. And we have an Instagram page, which is at Panels 2 Pixels Podcast, all spelled out in words, Panels 2 Pixels Podcast. And we would like everybody else to check out all the other podcasts on the next level, RadioOnline.com. And you can see Wilhelm, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. Coming up, we will have more from the Umbrella Academy Season 3 and, of course, the next episode of She-Hulk Season 1. I hope hope it's Season 1. I hope it's not. I hope they they carry this on because I'd love to see her continue and and get to to do more stuff. I'd love a Season 2, whatever they do with it. Ah, Same here. I'd like to have more, even though we know that the Umbrella Academy, spoilers, everybody, listeners, news, news, news. Uh, apparently Umbrella Academy is only getting a season four and that's going to be ending the series. So, uh, that was released not too long ago. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to see what they do with this and how they complete the whole series itself and see how that ends. So, uh, we're, we're going to be completing our series, uh, our season three coverage of Umbrella Academy. So stick with us there and send in your thoughts. Absolutely. So, Mark, where else can listeners hear us? Well, uh, I can be heard on panels. No, 
I'm already on panels. This uh, is panels. This You're is on panels. it right now. I'm already right now. <laughs> oh my god! No, you could also hear me on Adrenaline Cinema podcast, and that can be found on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. And there, and we cover action, adventure, fantasy, thriller, suspense films, anything that gets your adrenaline going. So check that out. Um, coming out. It should already be up by now. By the time this comes out, is Predator with Steve and I, and we're covering 1987. Was it 87 or 86? 87. Mm -hmm. 87 Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Very cool. And uh, after that, we're going to be covering Prey. You could also hear me on Podcast Network. I'm covering The Sandman that's on Netflix with our friend Jamie Dimmick, and we're covering Sandman. We're doing season one of Sandman, uh, and it's called Sandman Cast. So all you have to do is go to podcastica.com, and you can check that out there and get the links. Very cool. For me, I send voicemails to various friends' podcasts, so they hear my voice pop up on those. Uh, I want to push uh, TV podcast industries. They're doing uh, quite a bit here coming up. They've got a lot oh, yeah. going on. I've tried to send them stuff. I try to send stuff to Mark and Jamie and try to get stuff out there to everybody that I can be, that I'm friends with, that podcast. So, and, of yeah. course, you can hear me right here on Panels to Pixels. Yep, of course. And you can hear them on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, too, by the way. Occasionally. Occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that there ends it, everybody. And basically, well, same podcast, different panel, different pixel. I'm Mark. I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.